th this is important to know that there are differences between khul'a and divorce. For example, divorce number one and divorce number two, the idda period is three monthly cycles if she's not pregnant. While khul'a is one monthly cycle, similar to the third divorce. If a man divorces his wife for the third time, she waits only for one monthly cycle and then she can marry again. But the first and second divorces, she has to wait three monthly cycles. Khula is exactly the same as the third divorce in the sense that she's awarded Khula today. In the evening, she gets her menses. Five days later, she's pure. The sixth day, she can get married to another man. Boom. No problem. Also, in divorce one and divorce two, during the Idda period, she is considered to be his wife. And if he wants, he can revoke the marriage, reconcile with her, with or without her permission. She has no say in it. He's the one who divorced. He's the, one, the on, he's the only one who has the right to revoke the marriage and get her back to uh, um, the marriage institution or whatever. If she refuses, it has no value. In khul'a, once the khul'a is awarded, a couple of weeks later, the man says, oh, I changed my mind. I revoke my khula. Nope. No done deal. It's over. So what to do? The woman herself wants to go back in marriage with him. This is a different situation. You can propose to her guardian. And if he agrees, then we can make a marriage contract with a new mahar, with two Muslim male witnesses. It's the, full, the whole full nine, nine yards. But other than that, no, you cannot revoke the khul as you wish. So uh, this is yani, almost everything that we need to know about what's uh, in khul. And um, I think we should uh, move on to the questions.